Hello everyone. It is August 9th and it's um, we're still in summer here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, it's been pretty hot and humid here lately, although we're supposed to get a break at the end of the week. But, um, but yeah, so you know, if you do art shows, August means that the fall is coming up and all the art shows, the crazy art shows are coming up um, in the fall. There's, you know, so many, so many art shows. I'm only in, I think a couple right now, but I, I need to get into some more. Um, this has been, I think COVID or something, it's just been a lazy summer and usually I'm in like five or six a year. I, I've only been in one this year, which is weird, but uh, I just had a revelation um, that I have a big art show in four four weeks, and I've got you know plenty of stuff, but um, but you know in my mind, you know, it's like I don't have all the a lot of the good stuff, the, the good sellers, you know. Um, one of my really good sellers, I just made. Well, I'm in the midst of also making platters. Um, I sell I sell a lot of platters, but anyway, um, some of you reached out and wanted me to do a video of making my purse planters and um, and I call them purse planters but they're really they could be um, utility holder to put your utility stuff in your uh, spatulas and wooden spoons and things in your kitchen too um, uh, when I first started making these what I would do is fill a ziploc bag with dirt put some flowers in it and just you know set it in here and then put some moss around the outside and I used to sell them that way but um, but you know but really they're you can use them for anything I, they would I mean I'm sure they would hold water I should probably test them you know as long as your clay is vitrified it'll hold water but so this is the front and this is the back um, so now this is standard 266 clay, but they didn't have that when I went to my local clay supplier the last time. So what I'm using today is uh, the Kentucky Brown Bear. It's a cone four, five, and six, or five and six. Um, but it's a nice, it's a nice clay, nice dark brown clay. And then this is um, underglaze that I wiped on and then let it get kind of dry and then wiped it off with a damp sponge and then of course you know all the stamps and stuff on here so this is what I'm going to be making so I thought I'd hop on here and, and make one um, they're, they're really simple I mean you know so but anyway so set that over there and let me lower you down I hope you guys are all doing well it's getting it's getting dark out here it's actually like I think eight o'clock eight o'clock at night usually I used to work it late at night all the time but I don't know lately I've just been doing it in the morning and too tired after supper anyway so <laughs> I'm getting old anyways so this is just a copy sheet of paper eight eight and a half by eleven just your typical piece of loose leaf paper or copy paper for your printer I thought um, it'd be easy to show you a standard thing. And then what I do is I take about two inches. I just bend it over. See? Okay. So I rolled out a, a slab, um, on my slab roller. It's probably been a couple hours ago now. And I let it stiffen up. I let it sit for a while because th these are much easier to do if your slabs are stiff. I've I've done it when the slabs are softer, but um, you kind of have to stuff the inside with newspaper in order to get it to stand up and not warp. So I'm actually cutting a little wider than just on the sides. I'm going to cut it a little bit wider because I know I'll trim some off um, when I'm scoring. And of course, you know how everything shrinks, so you got to take the shrink factor 
into play in the consideration. So there's one. As you can see, I'm working on this is birch wood, um, and when I originally bought them, I think you can buy them this size from Home Depot. Um, they'll cut them for you if if you want them to. If you can't cut them yourself, they will cut them for you. But they do have sheets of birch wood, and then I just put some tongue oil on here, or I'm sorry, linseed oil. Let me cut this bottom off and you know you you know this is my opinion but you should not do clay on canvas or cloth of any kind because cloth holds the clay dust and as we know clay dust is toxic there is silica in your clay which is basically very fine grains of uh, or sh fine shards of glass so so yeah so you don't want to do not want to breathe in clay dust so okay so so we got our two slabs here so I'm, I like to decorate them before I put them on the bottom before I put them together I like to decorate them so I've got some stamps that I made. Let's see here. I got boxes and boxes of stamps. Let's see what this one does here. So, I think this is a. Sometimes I dust this with um, cornstarch. Let's see. Sometimes I dust them with cornstarch so that the stamps don't stick. So I make my own stamps. I just take little wads of clay that's left over and make just little stamps. I've got a whole box of them that I that I do. Um, maybe with a little heart on it. You can see that. And a leaf and you know, like I said I here's one with two sided so let's see here um I like to put I don't know what let's we'll do this on the sides since the one I showed you has these it looks like it's this the clay is pretty stiff. So this will be the front and the back. When I first started taking pottery, um, no one, you know, no one told me that how toxic clay was and glaze um, you really you really do have to be careful so now these stamps that I made these are just um, bisked they're not glaze fired which means they are not vitrified and because they're not vitrified it kind of helps them not to stick to the clay. My patterns are always kind of loose. I don't. I don't worry about things lining up and matching, matching too much. 
put a design across the bottom and I'll show you as soon as I get done with this. So you can kind of see what I did there. And the cornstarch, of course, will just burn out, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's see. Um, I was trying to think of what I was going to, what kind of design I was going to do earlier, and um, hmm. I think what I'll do is just this is kind of my. You know how I like to do, I don't know if they're peonies or roses or, you know, but my squirrel flowers. So this will, this will be the front. Um, and let's see, I got a little leaf, a little leaf pattern here. Stamping is so much fun. Okay, so now, uh, let's see, I'm going to take the back of an old paintbrush and then I'm just going to put some indentations that shows the flower's stems. There we go. And let's see, I might I think I might just put some Okay. So I want to be careful I don't want to stretch this too much. So that's what the front's going to look like. And actually, I think I'm going to do um, hmm, some kind of pattern over the top. Here's one. Maybe I'll try that one. See what that one looks like. Yeah, that looks good. There you go. So that'll be the front. And then I'm going to bring this along to the back so I can tie the front into the back and you can make these any size obviously you don't have to make them this size um, so what do I want to put on the back I had let's see looking for a rubber stamp that I had Um, <clears throat> these, I, I believe Mako makes these. I bought these a long time ago, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they still sell them. It's just, you know, a flimsy piece of rubber. So I'm going to put this on the back. And then I have my little trusty roller here. I'll hold this in place while I'm rolling it so it doesn't move around too much. I 
I love these long rubber stamps they have. Oh, it's one of, this is one of my favorites that they have. And I think I'm going to put, got my little heart here. I think I might put a little heart in the top. And then, so this will be the back. I know it's probably kind of hard to see with um, the cornstarch on there, but um, I think the cornstarch helps to, since the stamp doesn't stick, I think you get a deeper stamp. And that's just my opinion, but I think you get a deeper stamp. Okay. So I'm going to turn these over. I'm going to go ahead and score these edges where they're going to meet. I'm going to dip my little serrated rib into water. And I'm just going to keep kind of scratching this, scoring it. And by dipping it in the water, I'm just kind of creating my own slurry. If you put too much slip on here, they won't they won't want to stick together. Alrighty. And I'm kind of thinning out this edge as I as I score it. There we go. And let's see. Um, I was looking for my trusty paint brush to brush on a little more water. Just a little bit more. There we go. Let's take a sponge. There we go. And then I also want to do the bottom because this is going to sit on another slab. There we go. And wet that. Okay. Now I'm going to put these two pieces together. So I don't want them to stick to each other when I put them together. So I'm going to put some cornstarch just in the center of these two pieces. Okay. And you'll see what I'm going to do in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to take these two pieces now. And lay them on top of each other. Just kind of roll the sides. Looks like a flat, flat pocketbook now. Alrighty. Okay, so I've got I've got another piece of another slab cut out, another piece here. These are about these are a little over a quarter a little over a quarter inch. Um, and I kind of know where this is gonna sit. So I'm gonna score it now. a little bit of water on there and like I said this is going to create the slip that we need to attach it sometimes I sometimes I use slip but I don't know my slip always dries out and it's like why do I bother I usually use um, vinegar too and, and just vi vinegar and score it with vinegar because 
the vinegar acts as kind of like a glue. So, okay, I'm going to slip my hand inside here very carefully. And open this up. And if they come up, if the sides come apart, don't worry about it. You can always put them back together. Okay. So you can see I'm just kind of squeezing it like that. Okay. Now, it depends on how you want it. Do you want it really wide open or partially wide open? Just set it down on here. Okay, so now I've got just an old wooden spoon and I am going to maneuver this bottom to the shape that I want it at. And if you have to get your hands in there, just push out that bottom. Got it. I think I got it how I want it. I want to open up this side just a little bit more. Oops. That's good. Okay, so now I take my needle tool and I'm just going to cut around the outside, just a little outside of the outline of the walls. I'm not cutting it directly up against the wall sides because I like to bend the side, the bottom up a little bit. So, okay, so now carefully, this doesn't stick. Don't stick. Looks like it wants to stick to the table. There we go. Okay. Okay, make sure you have it, like I said, the shape you want it. So now what I'm going to do is carefully flip it upside down. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to tap it to make sure it is stuck just all along the edges here. And as I'm doing this, I'm I'm actually, if you can tell. I'm folding the bottom up to the, up along the side a little bit. See that? I like to do that because I like to show the seam. I think it makes for a really nice um, seal. I'm going to do that on this side also because I'm not going to go in and put a coil along the inside edges of this. I've, there we go. I am going to 
to smooth the bottom down just a little bit. So I have a nice, I know I have a nice good seal. So while I have it upside down, I'm going to, I don't know if that'll put my name on the bottom. I have several stamps. This is one that says Lisa that I bought from, um, I think it was Stamp for Clay. Can't remember now. Okay. There we go. There's the bottom. I'm going to flip back over and run my finger. Actually, I think I'm going to get a sponge. Okay. And just rub the sponge along the bottom here. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to take my rubber rib and run this up along this side, working this seam together. You don't want to see this seam, or I don't. You could you could show the seam, um, but I, I I like to make sure that it's very well sealed. And then in the top here, I'm going to take a scrap piece of clay. I don't worry about down the sides because I think they're pretty well sealed, but the top here, let me show you. So this is just a little worm of clay, a little coil of clay. I'm going to put it right down here, whoops, see, right down here in this edge. to strengthen that. And just kind of work that in with my thumb. I don't know where this summer has gone, but I hate the thought of it being almost over. Sometimes we have a really hot September and summer goes right into October and sometimes we have a, even a warm, pretty warm November. So we're pretty lucky there, but, but we've had snow in October before. That's probably, that's probably the earliest, but I just, you know, the nights get colder and so I hate to even, I don't know. I like to sit outside on my front porch at night uh, especially when the cars die down and it's not, the traffic's not so busy. Because I, I live on a busy street. I didn't think it was that busy when I bought the house. But <laughs> after we moved in, it was like, felt like a freeway. And we live on a bend in the road, a real sharp bend in the road. So, you know, everybody goes by, thinks they're an, in an Indy driver. And uh, they used to, everybody used to squeal tires around the corner. <laughs> it used to scare the heck out of me uh, when we first moved here. Um, but now they came along and roughed up the road. And it's not so, not, not so bad now. We used to have wrecks all the time, too. Okay, so just made another little worm here. And I'm going to put this, I call them worms, but they're really coils. I don't know why I always just call them worms. And while holding the outside, because you don't want to push that in and then spread apart your seam. While I'm holding the seam on the outside, I'm going to work that coil inside. And if you've got a bunch of um, cornstarch there, just take like a brush and wash the cornstarch away. You don't want to try to put a seam in there 
uh, work this coil in on top of cornstarch. It may, not, it may not stick if you do that. And I always like watching the lightning bugs outside at night too. There's something, to me, there's something magical about a lightning bug. When you see the first lightning bug in the spring, it's like, ah, oh, spring is here. So, I don't know, I've always, when we were kids, we used to, well, I shouldn't say this probably, we used to take the, the backs off of them and make rings and jewelry out of glow-in-the-dark <laughs> lightning bugs. I know, that's terrible, isn't it? Kind of gross, too. I don't know, but we were... We were raised in the country. We were, you know, I was a tomboy. I never wore, it was pretty rare I ever wore a dress. <laughs> I had four brothers, so all my dolls pretty much got beat up and thrown over the hill. And so, yeah, we. I don't know. Uh, my mother was probably hoping for somebody who wore dresses every day, but that was pretty odd. Okay, so, okay, we got it's looking good, huh? So now we're going to do the handles. So, all right. Um,. Look at the front here. I think you don't want to put the handles too close, but I think I'm going to put them. I'm going to put them out to the side a little bit, so um, you know you can have your bunch of flowers in the center. Let's move this up a little bit. You can see the other one back here, how far apart I have these. So I'm going to score in the front here. And I'm going to put some water on there to create a little bit of a slip. And then dip my serrated rib into the water. All right. Okay, so I'm going to set this over here. And I've got a couple pieces here. Um, this is just an old piece of wood, kind of a slat. I use it actually as um, handles size. And then if I'm making pots, I make all my pots this size and all the lids this size. They all match. So, okay. Um, doesn't really and be, you could make um, handles that hang down the side um, or you could even put um, a big hole in the side on each one on this side and this side and make a wire handle. Let me see if I can't get this to come up. There we go. Um, so what I was saying is you could put a hole here and hole here and then make a wire handle that comes across the top. So you don't have to do a clay handle. You can do a wire or um, you could even put a couple loops, clay loops, and put, well, 
um, you'd have to, clay loops would have to be higher because if you want to use it for flowers, you want to make sure that you have this opening. So, and make sure too that, there we go, oh, I forgot to, um, since I'm talking here, I'm going to just take my thumb and rub this down. I did one side, I didn't do the other side. Just compress that good nice and smooth when I've got clay scraps I dip them in my water then I lay them on my table so that when I come back to use them they're not you know really hard and they you can't use them okay so I am going to measure these. Yeah, that's a good size. I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm going to smooth down the edges because I don't wanna to have to do that once I have them on there. You don't wanna, you don't wanna bump them. I'm also going to go ahead and score them while they're laying flat here. And let's see. I want to put a design on the front. I think what I'm going to do is. Um, I think I'm just gonna put one of the roses up top here. No, 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 Lisa. <laughs> Change my mind. I'm gonna put uh, a leaf. Just gonna do a leaf. Put one in the back too. I could have run a design up along the entire thing. That probably would have looked cute too. Um, but sometimes it gets overwhelming if you do too much. Okay, so now the fun part, getting them on here. And I'm going to really score this good because I do not want these puppies to come off. been so long since I've um, seems like I've been doing pottery here at the house I do at uh, the Dunham Recreation Center where I work but like I was saying before I don't know where the summer got away from me because now it's like I have an art show in a month and this is a big show this is a Friday night Saturday and Sunday and it is it is really long hours it's like 11 a.m. to like 10 p.m., but you end up being there to almost 11 p.m. because the show is is at a winery, so the winery is open <laughs> to drinkers <laughs> who are walking around and music and everything. So you almost kind of hate to leave your tent, even though you, you know, I have a tent that closes up on all four sides. Um, in fact, I had to get a new one for this year because the wind damaged my tent at this show last year. And it wasn't even stormy. It's just that this winery is up on top of a hill. And it is always windy up there. And I made the mistake of tying my tent to the fence post, which did not allow it to move. So since the tent didn't move, um, the frame bent because it, it wanted to move. So, okay, um, these are still, I'm gonna score just a little bit more. Like I said, I don't want these puppies coming off. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my handles, 
position it where I want it in the front and just kind of press. And then I'm going to position it in the back where I want it and press. And I'm going to put my hand on the inside. Where is my... And I'm going to take one of my stamps. Like I said, with my hand on the inside, I'm going to press that down with my stamp. Put my finger on the back. And then do the same thing for the back. Okay. And now we're going to do this side here. So here I am putting it in the front. Squeezing it with my thumb and my finger. Let's see where this is in the back. There we go. Okay, and now with my hand on the inside, I'm going to, I'm going to take my stamp. And I'm actually going to take my, um, my brush put a little water on the inside of here so that stays nice and moist until these handles dry. I don't want handles since they're thinner will tend to dry out faster than the body of this and then they want to fall off. Falling off is not good. Okay, I can't set my hand on the inside. There we go. There we go, okay. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Just message me. If you like my videos, I appreciate a, if you maybe share or subscribe. Helps me out with the algorithms or whatever of YouTube. So I'm just going to kind of bend these in place once I, now that I have them on so that they're not trying to bend in a different direction than how they're attached. But that is basically it. I'm going to make some pitcher planters next. And I'll do a video, um, see how they turn out. If I like them, I'll show them to you and do a video of that. But I have a pattern I made of that. I made my own pattern. I saw a tin, tin can, not a tin can, a tin pitcher, a metal pitcher, whatever, like a flower vase pitcher. And, um... I just took, you know, cardboard and made a pattern. Kept playing with it until um, I got how I wanted it. So, okay, so here we go. Now it's pretty, it's still pretty wet. So, so I'm just going to bend this out a little bit, get it back into shape after I've been playing with it. You can stretch the clay out if you want and kind of I'm gonna try to pick this up without 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 breaking it. Ah, let's see if I can't raise this up. There we go. It's getting dark outside. You used to stay light till oh I'm crooked. You're crooked, Lisa. Not literally. Not literally. I'm an honest person. Okay, so. Pick this up and. Uh, maybe I have a piece of. Let me think if I got. Uh, the wood. All my wear boards are all scattered around. Uh, 
Here's one, because I'm going to set it on this board. There we go. Oh, these chairs. I got all these cushions on my chairs. They're still, still hard. Okay. There we go. I'm going to move back here so you can see the whole thing. What do you think? So I think what I'll do though, when I'm done with this, I'm going to put, um, um, actually I might, I might, I don't know. I'm, I was, I'm debating whether to put slip over it. The problem with the slip is, um, I don't know. Um, yeah, it could smear the design a little bit. Uh oh, my battery's going dead. Yikes. So, oh my goodness. So, okay, I'm going to have to say goodbye because my battery on my phone is going dead. So, I will post a picture of this when it's done. <laughs> Every time I end a video, something happens, doesn't it? Okay. So, now we're in the dark. See you later. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I'm good for some laughs, right? <laughs> have a good night. How much... Trying to see how much battery I have left. But I'm so dark you can't see me anyway. Okay, have a great night and I will talk to you later.